So I guess in the front here and then in the back there. Hi, um, I was wondering um, what you thought about the statistical like, robustness of the idea of critical mass and tipping points. So I think you wrote a blog recently about the number of senators who are increasing their support for gay marriage and the kind of the rise in public support across the country, which isn't yet mapped out in the number of states who have passed laws in support of it. Um, so that's just sort of one example. I was wondering what you thought about the idea of ideas and certain laws gaining sort of critical mass in different countries. So, you know, so, uh, so with respect to gay marriage in particular in the US, you've had a very, very steady and linear increase in public polls in the US over the past 10 or 15 years, where support for gay marriage has gone up by about a point and a half, uh, two points almost exactly every year. Um, but you suddenly have had a lot of, of senators who have come around to endorsing gay marriage. It went from about 30 senators a year ago to 54, I think it is now, um, a very rapid shift. And the question is, is why? And my idea is that once you finally had polls showing a majority of people support it in the US, then it created kind of a, a critical mass of people piled on to the bandwagon. Um, uh, but in a more general sense, uh, you know, how often are there, are there tipping points in the data? Uh, I mean, a lot of data has nonlinear relationships, but the question is whether we know in advance kind of what the tipping point might be. Um, where, for example, there are ideas about, well, once you reach a certain debt to GDP ratio, then you fall over some cliff and you can't really recover. Um, you know, there are some problems with some recent papers in this area. Um, but apart from that, it takes a really, really rich and robust data set to say, to exactly pinpoint the tipping point, right? Um, and it usually is more of a, a curve. It's not where you magically cross some threshold and you go from zero to infinity. It's like you have a, a curve and it accelerates a bit or decelerates a bit, but you require really precise data to know where that is exactly. So I don't know. Um, in general, I'm, uh, I'm wary of arguments where you have a complex data set and people claim there's a tipping point somewhere. It's often a very politicized claim where you have a, a vague result and they have to insist that we must change our policy right now, right? I mean, you can use this a bit in the environmental debate um, where there's not really a consensus on, on what tipping points are as you have more warming in the atmosphere, um, what's the point of no return? I mean, it's probably more risk to say that uh, given what we know that adding more and more carbon in the atmosphere is probably a bad thing and it will make things worse and worse, but to say that, oh, we cross threshold X and then disaster occurs, it's usually not, we aren't usually that smart to know exactly when that is. The data is not usually precise enough to give us that much um, information. <laughs>